Resourceful Designer, episode 199, Retention Marketing. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host, He's having more and more trouble coming up with these unique introductions for each episode. Mark Decote. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this week's episode, I'm going to talk about the power of marketing to people who already know you. And I'm going to share a resource that is my current choice when it comes to website hosting. Now, what have I been up to? One fun thing I've been up to this week is the LinkedIn Challenge. Now, this is a challenge put on by my friend, Andrea Jones. And if you'll remember, Andrea joined me on the podcast for episode 178. And in that episode, she mentioned the power of using LinkedIn to grow your business. So she was putting on a free LinkedIn challenge and I participated in that. And I think it's really going to pay off. We went through, it was a day-by-day challenge, updating profile photo that was there, not just uh, your profile picture, but the banner at the top of your page your summary, your tagline, creating posts, all sorts of stuff. So I'm much more comfortable now in LinkedIn. And I think going forward, it's really going to help me. I'm enjoying this tool the more I use it, much more so than Facebook and Instagram and all the others. So that was a big part of my week was just taking part in that LinkedIn challenge, which even though the challenge is technically over by the time you hear this episode, I think you could still go in. It won't be a live challenge, but I think you can still go through and watch all the videos. It's absolutely free, by the way, but you can go through and follow through on the videos and the step-by-step instructions. And if you're curious about that and want to give it a try and think that LinkedIn might be something you want to challenge yourself with this year, then visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash LinkedIn challenge and that'll redirect you to Andrea's Savvy Social School page where you can sign up for the challenge for free. So that's one of the things that I've been up to. I'm also been getting ready for next week episode 200. Can you believe that episode 200 of the podcast next week? And I'm going to do something special. I'm not going to spoil it now, but I'm going to do something special for the podcast next week. So tune in, but I've been getting things ready for it this week. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention to you is when you're communicating with people, and I shouldn't have to say this, but when you communicate with people, being cordial and polite goes a long way. This might sound kind of weird, but first of all, I have multiple email addresses. Well, one of them is with my internet service provider. Actually, I have a bunch of email addresses with my internet service provider. But one of them, and I don't know how they let me register this, is billing at, and then the the rest of the domain. And it never fails. Every month, I get several emails from people thinking that they're emailing the billing department at my internet service provider. Again, I don't know why they let me register that as one of my email addresses and not keep it reserved for them, but they did. So I get these messages. And every month, I get people, first of all, most of the time when people email the billing department, it's to complain about something. And I get people that are just so ornery and impolite and downright rude in their emails. Practically, you can imagine them yelling at the billing department of this company. And I just delete those emails. I don't feel sorry for the people, whatever their problem is. If that's the way they're going to act, I delete them. But every once in a while, I'll get an email with somebody that is really polite. They are explaining their situation they go into detail, and of course, this is detail I shouldn't be seeing because they think they're they're dealing privately, but that's besides the point. But for those people that are very polite, I will actually reply to the email and let them know that they have not reached the proper place, that this is my email address, and give them the proper email address that they should be sending their message to. And they will often reply to me, thanking very, me very much for that. But all of this to say that When you are communicating with anything, with a service, customer service, with a tech support or that, courtesy and politeness goes a long way. I delete many, many more of those messages than I reply to. I only reply to the nice ones. Anybody who is being angry or mean or cursing and stuff like that, I just delete those messages and let them worry about their their own problem. So I just wanted to mention that, and I, I know I shouldn't really have to, you, you know that, but 
sometimes frustration gets the better of us and we don't take the time to think about what we're writing or what we're saying. And it shows. I, I'm learning that. And I've been learning that for the past several years, ever since I registered this email address. And as I said, every month I get these. And wow. Anyways, that's kind of a little bit about what I've been up to. Of course, there is the resourceful community. I'm spending a lot of time in there. I'd like to say thank you and welcome to Laura and Tabitha, the two newest members of the community. They just recently joined and uh, getting excited. We're having our next video chat will be coming up next week where we're going to be talking about presenting, just presenting, whether you're presenting a proof, you're presenting a price, presenting your services or whatever, just different things. And these video chats are kind of an open roundtable format. So everybody can chip in and give advice and give the way they do things. And we all learn together from this. So this is just not me teaching everybody. It's everybody having a say, and they are great. Everybody loves these video roundtables, these video chats. It's a great way to grow as a designer, to grow your business, to learn things from like-minded people in the industry. So that's coming up on the Resourceful Designer community, which is only available to members. But if you're interested in becoming a member, and of course, there's much more than just the video chats, there's the entire Slack community, and that's where most of our communication takes place. If you're interested in joining, please visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community. And now as this week's resource of the week, as I mentioned, this is my favorite web hosting platform right now, and it is SiteGround. Now, I've joined SiteGround about a year and a half ago, and I was on HostGator. And in all honesty, I had no problems with HostGator. I had no issues. They've always been really good to me. And I was promoting them on a regular basis. But then I had heard some really good things about SiteGround and decided to uh, make a leap whenever they had it. It was a Black Friday sale, and they had a really good sale. So I purchased three years of hosting through them on that Black Friday sale. And I made the leap, and I have not regretted it since. Their platform is very solid. Everything is very easy to use. And the best thing is their customer support. Now, uh, it is a chat feature, but anytime I've had an issue, and it's very few and far between between issues, but anytime I have had a problem with anything, it's a simple matter of getting on the chat, discussing it with one of their support people, and within minutes, usually the problem is fixed. And they are so great of keeping us informed and offering all sorts of bonus services that are included, as well as, as paid add-ons that are really reasonably priced compared to a lot of other places. I just really enjoy all the service I'm getting from SiteGround. And I know that whenever my three years are up, I will be renewing. So if you're looking for a good, fast, reliable web host, especially one that really understands WordPress, I highly, highly recommend SiteGround. Now, I do have an affiliate with them. I I think everybody who signs up has an affiliate with them. I'm not 100% sure about that. But I do have an affiliate. If you go to resourcefuldesigner.com slash SiteGround and you do sign up, then I do make a small commission on the sale. So that's this week's resource of the week. If you're looking for web hosting, SiteGround is who I recommend. And now, episode 199, Retention Marketing. First off, let me say that today's topic is mostly aimed at people with an existing design business and an established client base. Now, with that said, if you don't already have an existing design business, or if you do, but you only have a a small handful of clients, you may still want to listen. You will benefit because some of this that I'm going to share with you today will help you to lay a proper foundation that will make it easier for future growth of your design business. So, As I'm sure you're aware of, in order to grow any business, people have to know who you are. After all, if someone doesn't know a business exists, there's really very little chance they'll interact with it, let alone purchase from it. Now, I also think you know that the strategy for letting people know about a business is called marketing. And marketing can be broken down into, well, it can be broken down into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different angles or divisions or whatever. Let's just call them alleys, hundreds and hundreds of different alleys. And when it comes to marketing, the sky's the limit, both figuratively and literally. I do a podcast for the television show, The Expanse. I didn't know if you know that I do that, but there's a a sci-fi show called The Expanse and I do a kind of an after show podcast on it. And when Sci-Fi Channel in the US canceled The Expanse at the end of season three, 
viewers were outraged. The show was getting super reviews. It was really well received, but Sci-Fi decided to cancel it anyways. Well, the viewers decided to start a marketing campaign in order to get Amazon. Or they were looking for anybody, but they were really hoping that Amazon would pick up The Expanse. And this marketing campaign included flying a plane around the Amazon headquarters building with a, a banner trailing behind it that read, Save the Expanse. So the sky, when it comes to, to marketing, the sky really is the limit. By the way, that marketing campaign did work. Amazon did pick up the expanse for two seasons, so season four and season five. My podcast is currently halfway through season four right now. And if you are a fan of the expanse and you want to know more about my podcast, visit solotalkmedia.com. That's my podcasting network website. Anyways, back to marketing. When it comes to marketing, you can hit all five senses. That's one of the great things about marketing. Now, of course, the two most common are visual and audio marketing. Visual marketing encompasses things like print ads, displays, website, digital ads, television commercials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then audio marketing includes things like radio and podcast ads. There's intercom messages that you hear in stores and in the malls. There's even audio marketing when it comes to watching sports. You know, when you're watching a game and and all of a sudden the announcer says, Hey, did you see that amazing play on third base? Speaking of amazing plays, did you know that you can save 10% on your home and auto insurance by switching to, well, you get the idea. That's audio marketing. But the other three senses are not left out either. Have you ever walked by a store or especially a restaurant and been attracted by the smell? That's olfactory marketing. Don't believe me? Try driving through a city with your eyes closed. I guarantee you'll know when you're near McDonald's just by the smell. McDonald's has a distinct smell that you can pick out from all the other restaurant smells. That's a form of olfactory marketing. What about taste? Well, have you ever been in a grocery store and they had these little samples that you can try? Or maybe at a restaurant where they pass out these little things and encourage you to try it in the hopes that maybe you'll buy it? Or maybe you're old enough to remember the old Pepsi challenge. For those of you who don't, Pepsi started this marketing campaign. It was back in the mid-70s, and it ran for well over a decade. And what it was was they'd get Coke drinkers who they would blindfold and then ask them to try the two products, one after each other, and pick the one they liked best. And of course, the campaign would always show the person picking Pepsi and being all surprised because they were a lifelong Coke drinker, and now, wow, they picked out Pepsi as the better of the two. That was taste marketing. Actually, that was taste marketing at uh, its finest, if you ask me. And then finally, there's the last sense, which is touch, touch marketing. And if you want to know, you're saying, Mark, touch marketing? Really? Just look at any toilet paper campaign out there, and you'll see an example of touch marketing. I mean, which one is softer on your bottom? Now, I'm getting off track here. All of this is to say that when it comes to marketing, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of different methods you can choose. But let's narrow marketing all the way down to, let's call it its two fundamental funnels. There's growth marketing, which is all about attracting new customers. And then there's retention marketing, which, as the name suggests, is all about retaining customers. And it's that second one that I want to talk about today in regards to your design business. As a designer, whether you call yourself a freelancer or a business owner, or whatever, you need for people to know about your design business before there's any chance that they'll hire you. Am I right? As I said earlier, if someone doesn't know about you, there's practically no chance that they're going to hire you for your services. But the problem that most businesses face, and that includes design businesses, is that they're so worried about getting new people to know about them that they completely ignore the people who are already familiar with their services. A study published in the Harvard Business Review states that acquiring a new client requires a minimum of five times more effort than retaining an existing one. And similar research done by Bain and Company states that if you can increase the number of returning clients by, say, 5%, your profits will go up by at least 25%. Now, I'll have a link in the show notes to the actual study if you're interested in knowing more. It's a study on the value of keeping customers. But what this amounts to is keeping your existing clients 
is very valuable. And yet, according to these same studies, only 16% of businesses make any effort at marketing to existing clients. So what does this mean for your design business? It means that your existing client base is a valuable treasure trove of future opportunity. And that's why you need to focus effort on retention marketing, meaning marketing to your existing clients in order for them to bring you new design projects. But Mark, my clients already know what I do. They're, they're happy with the last project I did for them, and the next time they need me, they know how to get a hold of me. Don't be so sure of that. I want to share two personal stories with you. I have a, a client. It's a, a local jewelry store in the, the city right next to where I live. I've been doing work with this jewelry store ever since I started my business. In the first year of my business, I started working with them. In all the time I've been working with them, I've created flyers, brochures, uh, I've created sales coupons, postcards, posters, rack cards, business cards, magazine ads, there's been some digital ads, and there's probably some more that I'm forgetting right now, but you get the gist. I've designed a lot of stuff for them. And every time I do a job for them, they tell me how much they love my work. And yet, out of all those jobs that I mentioned and the few that I probably can't think of off the top of my head right now, in all the years I've done work with a jewelry store, only once do I remember them contacting me to initiate the project. Every other project that I've ever done for this client was initiated by me either sending them an email or walking into their store or when I happened to bump into the owner at some event or maybe even at a grocery store or something. On each one of those occasions, we would chat. How are you doing? What have you been up to? How's business going? And the conversation would often turn to discussing marketing stuff and that, which would eventually lead to the owner asking me to do a project for him. Now, I guarantee you, if I had not initiated those conversations, I wouldn't have gotten those projects. And how do I know that for sure? Because every time I go into his jewelry store, I see things around there that I know I did not design for him. And I ask him about it. I'll say, where did this come from? And each time, he'll tell me completely unashamed that, oh, that one was designed by so-and-so. And and this one over here was designed by this other designer. And just on a side note here, that's another lesson for you. Some of your clients, like this one that I have and others that I've had over the years, they like to spread the wealth, if you want to call it that way. They like to spread the wealth around and use multiple designers. I've had several clients like this over the years. They want to make everybody happy, so they give their next project to whomever the next designer it is they see. And that's why, as part of my retention marketing, especially with this client, I make a point of walking into that store whenever I'm in the neighborhood. I also make a point of sending him friendly emails, asking him things like, hey, how'd your Christmas season go? Did everything go well? Did you you meet your expectations? See, these are all forms of retention marketing. I've got to keep reminding him that I'm here, and only then does he remember to give me work. Now, my second story isn't as great. This one's to show you that taking the client will contact me when they need my help approach could actually hurt you. You see, just last year, I lost a website client. Now, this was a long-standing client that had been with me for years. I had designed their website many years ago, and it was long overdue for a refresh. Now, I contacted the client about redesigning their new website and was told that they didn't have the money in their budget right now to do it, but they agreed that, yes, the website needs to be done and that they would make sure that they allotted money in the budget the next time around in order to do the website. So I told them, well, I fully understand. Let me know when you're ready. And I left it at that. I mean, the client knew my services. I'd been working with them for years. They knew I was familiar with their business, and they knew that I was eager to work with them on their new website. Plus, I managed their domain name. So what did I have to worry about? They would just contact me whenever they were ready. Or so I thought. Then one day, out of the blue, I receive an email from somebody, somebody I didn't know, asking me to change the name servers for this client's domain. Now, completely confused and, of course, taken aback, I called my client asking what was going on. He told me that he had hired a different local firm to design his new website. And when I asked why, if there was any issues with my services or if I had done anything wrong, 
He said, oh, no, it was just that this newer company had mailed him some information. They had sent him some stuff in the mail about their company. Then they had reached out via email with a bunch of things and asked if he had any questions. They had a few conversations. Then they went in and they visited the store and they talked with the owner and they had a look around and they made some comments and some suggestions. And this client told me that he was impressed enough by their dedication that he decided to reward them by giving them a chance to design the new website. Now, he did assure me that he still wants to work with me, but considering that the website was the only project I ever had with him, that still remains to be seen. And all of this happened because I was simply too confident that my client was loyal to me, and I didn't bother doing anything to try to retain him because I didn't think I had to. And that taught me a valuable lesson. And that's why I'm actually sharing this with you today, so that something similar doesn't end up happening to you. Don't take your existing clients for granted. No matter how good you believe your relationship is, you still need to make an effort to keep that relation going strong. It's just normal. It's like friendship 101. The friends you keep in contact with are the ones that will call and ask if you want to get together on the weekend. And the friends you don't keep in contact with are less likely to do that. Don't believe me? How many of your old high school friends would you want to call up right now and ask them to come over this weekend? There may be a couple that you might say, yeah, they'd be fun to catch up with, but chances are there are several of your old friends, people you used to hang out with on a regular basis, that you wouldn't bother calling up right now, even if you had the chance. And that's because you've lost touch with them. And the same happens with clients that you don't keep in contact with. Who knows, maybe if I had put in the effort to keep in contact with my client, he would have turned down this new company instead of giving them a chance. But he did because they were there and I wasn't. So how can you use retention marketing for your business? As I stated earlier, it requires at least five times less effort to market to an existing client than it does to acquire a new client. After all, the client already knows you and they know what you do, so you don't have to worry about all that part of it. So the best advice I can give you is simply to stay in touch with your clients. And the first step in doing that is, well, first of all, and this is the best kind of marketing you can do with any client, is provide them with an amazing experience when they work with you. Now, if you haven't listened to my seven-part series on client onboarding, which was episode 160 to 166, They show you how to introduce a client to what you do, walk them through your process, go through the design, and then at the end, part ways in a manner that encourages the client to come back for more. And it's that last part, part seven of the series, in which I cover the goodbye packet. Now, the goodbye packet is a way to build client loyalty after a project is finished. If you haven't listened to that series, it's super popular amongst my listeners Go back and start with episode 160 and listen through to 166. And that series is a great foundation for retention marketing. But, of course, there are other ways you can stay in touch as well. You can keep in contact in person, via the phone, or email. It's always a good idea every once in a while to reach out to a client just to see how they're doing. Don't use this as an opportunity to pitch your services. It's simply a way of staying in touch. That's how I keep getting work from this jewelry store client. I send him an email every once in a while, or I walk into his store. And you can do the same. Call or email an old client, or or go see them in person if you can, and simply tell them you were thinking about them for one reason or the other, and you thought you'd reach out to see how things were going. Now, of course, if the conversation does end up turning towards work and, and design projects, that's great, but it's not the reason for the call. Don't worry if you walk out of there and never having talked about design. Remember, relationship building is the key here. So pretend you're a couple of friends who got busy with life and now you're just catching up because that's what you're doing. Now, some designers use a newsletter to great effort for their retention marketing. In episode 192 of the podcast, I told you about Resourceful Designer community member Andrew and how he has a great newsletter that he sends out to his clients. It's a great tool for keeping in touch and letting his clients know what he's been up to. Even if it's not something one-on-one addressed directly to the client, although he does use a service that says, hi, Mark, hi, Andrew, hi, Amanda, or whatever, they know it's an email going out to a bunch of people. But just having that newsletter show up in their inbox keeps Andrew 
top of mind, which hopefully means that the next time that those clients need a designer, his name will be the first person they think of because, hey, they got a newsletter within the last few weeks from him. Now, another designer I know, and and coincidentally enough, his name is also Andrew, he told me that he often receives replies to his newsletter with new projects. So whenever he sends a newsletter out, his clients will often just reply to that newsletter and say, by the way, I've got this new project. Can you do this for me? So receiving his newsletter jogs something in the client's brain that made them take action. They hit reply in the newsletter and sent a new project his way. I've seen that exact effect myself. Back when I was working at the print shop, we actually hired a company that specialized in marketing for printers. They produced and distributed a monthly newsletter on our behalf. Now, of course, this was a newsletter that all a bunch of printers were using around the country, but they made it look like it was coming directly from us, and it was packed full of useful content for print purchasing clients. So ideas for new print jobs or or things that they can do, as well as just useful information around the office. So it was packed full of great content for print purchasing clients. And it never failed. Each month when we sent out our newsletter, or they sent out the newsletter on our behalf, there would be several people that would just hit reply to the newsletter, either with a new order. It's like, oh, your newsletter just made me think about something. I'd like to talk to you about this new print order. Or maybe it was just simply to request a reprint. Your newsletter made me think that I'm running low on business cards. Can I order another 500? Or sometimes it was to inquire about one of the topics covered in the newsletter. Oh, your newsletter talked about this innovative new printing technology or this new type of brochure. I want to know more about that. That's something I think I could use for my business. So every month when we sent this newsletter out, we would get people just replying to the newsletter or maybe not replying to the newsletter. Some of them would just say, oh, I got your newsletter. And they would send us a fresh email saying, I got your newsletter and it made me think of this. So the newsletter was actually jogging people's memories and causing them to place orders. So a newsletter is a great way to remain in your client's lives while between projects. Then, of course, there's social media. Now, a good practice is to follow your clients on social media. Now, if at all possible, create a profile for your business and follow them with that account. After all, you, there's a good chance that when you follow your client, they're going to follow you back, and you don't want to bombard them with your, your family photos, your vacation pictures, or the random snapshots of your dog doing cute things. I mean, that's great to share with family, but you don't want that interaction with your clients. So create a business profile for your business and use it for business and then keep your personal profile for your your own personal stuff. Now, Twitter and Instagram make it very easy to do this. You can create multiple accounts, but you can also do this a little bit with Facebook and with LinkedIn. You can't create a different personal account, but you can create a business page and use that page in order to follow people and stuff like that or get people to like your page and so forth as well as posting and liking and commenting as your page, as opposed to as your personal profile. The retention marketing strategy with social media is similar to a newsletter. You want your clients to know that you're still there, you're around. And you do this by replying or commenting on your client's posts. So you're following your clients. When you see a post, you can post a reply if it merits one or If there's something special going on, like your client announces some special event, why don't you consider sharing or even reposting it with your own business account? And while doing so, mention that, hey, this is one of your clients. So who knows? You know, the the, the father decides to retire and the son is taking over the business. Announce that on your social media saying, hey, this business, so-and-so is taking over the business for his father who retires. This is one of my clients. That sort of thing. And make sure when you do this sort of thing to tag your clients in the post. That's the important thing. That's how they'll know that you're doing this, that you're there, that you're you're interested. One of the podcasts that I designed cover art for a couple of years ago, they recently published episode 100. Now, I made sure, I knew they were coming up to episode 100. So I made sure once they published it, that I shared that milestone that they had achieved with my audience. Now, they didn't ask me to do this, nor did they even know I was going to do this. But they did take notice because I tagged them in the post, congratulating them on reaching 100 episodes. And that simple gesture was a form of retention marketing. Yes, it's going out to my audience and it's showing my audience the work that I did and how I helped these people. But in the process, that simple gesture ensured that that client 
remembered me and remembered what I did for them. And they thanked me for sharing it, and they thanked me again for the great artwork I created for them a couple of years ago. Now, another option when it comes to retention marketing is to send your clients something. Sending something physical is the easiest way to get people to think about you. Yes, an email will will get them to think, but if they actually get something in the mail that they can hold, they're going to remember that much longer than the email that they got and deleted. You may remember me saying a few months ago that I was taking a Facebook advertising course. I, I know I had talked about it on the podcast. It was one of the things I was doing. And it was a great course. I learned so much from that course, so much that I'm actually putting it to use right now with some Facebook advertising. But even though I'm using all that great knowledge I gained, I haven't really thought about the course itself, let alone the creator of the course, the instructor, in, I I don't know when the last time it was, until last week that was, when I received a personalized handwritten card in the mail from the course instructor. She sent me a message, personalized, hi Mark, and and thanking me for taking her class and just asking me how I was making out with my Facebook ads and saying she'd love to hear back and and just hear how, what sort of progress I'm having. All of a sudden, after several months of not thinking about her, I'm thinking about her again. Not only that, but that card prompted me without any asking for it, it prompted me to go visit her website again to see if she had any other services that I may be interested. And you know what? I did. I purchased a one-on-one coaching call with her that we've scheduled for her to go over my advertising campaigns to just see if there's anything better I can do. Now that's retention marketing at its best. She probably wouldn't have made that sale. I, I say probably. She wouldn't have made that sale if she had not sent me that personalized card in the mail. And I have that card sitting on my desk. It's been sitting on my desk for a week now. It's not an email that's in my inbox getting forgotten. I see this card every time I look down at my desk. And it's one of those things. I can throw it in the recycling bin, but chances are I'm going to put it in my drawer. Just it's personalized to me. It's a handwritten note. How many of those do you get these days? So I appreciated the effort that she put in and I'm paying her back with my patronage. I bought a new thing from her, one of her services that I probably wouldn't have. So a card or a postcard, it's one of the easiest physical things you can send. And if you're saying, well, I don't know what to write, you know, I could thank him. Like I haven't talked to that client in a while and it seems strange sending a card thanking them for something I did a a year or two years ago. Well, if you don't know what to write, have a listen to episode 59 of the podcast where I talk about using holidays to build your graphic design business. Just imagine how far it would go if Say you have uh, an old client that was a bakery. You haven't done anything for them in a while. And then you send them a card saying, Happy National Donut Day, whatever day National Donut Day ends up being. But you send them a card on that day. Do you think they'll remember you after that? I know I would remember receiving that card if I was a bakery and all of a sudden somebody that I had worked with a year or two ago sent me a card saying, Happy National Donut Day. Because really, how many National Donut Day cards do you think they'll receive? One, if you send one. And that's the sort of thing that will make them remember you for a long time. But of course, cards are not the only physical thing you can send. Uh, I've sent gift baskets before. I've sent flowers before to clients on stuff like special occasions, such as when a client got married or uh, one of my clients had a baby, I would send them something. When it comes to physical things, really the ideas you can come up with are endless. And as designers, we could come up with some pretty creative ideas especially if you're the type of designer who is very hands-on, you, you like to get creative and do your own things, then show off your skills and send these things to your clients and they would appreciate it. And best of all, that whole retention marketing thing, they will remember you for it. And they won't even realize that it's a form of marketing, that you, that's what you're doing. So all of this to say that one of the best ways to grow your design business is by getting more work from your existing clients. And to do that, you need to practice retention marketing. Now, of course, I only talked about a few of the methods of doing so. I didn't even touch on any actual marketing that you could do, such as informing clients of any new services you have to offer or reminding clients of the services that they may have forgotten or may not have realized you do. Don't believe me? Look back at the very second episode, episode two of the podcast. And that one was, do your clients know what you do? And you would be surprised at how many of your clients that you may have been working with for years don't realize all the services that you can offer them. So 
retention marketing could be just sending them information to let them know what other services. If you design a website for a client and you also do print stuff, let them know you do print stuff or vice versa. If you do print stuff for a client and they don't know that you do websites, let them know you do websites. And if you pick up a new skill or or you start offering a new service, make sure you let them know. What it all comes down to is making sure your clients don't forget about you or making sure they don't feel like you're ignoring or forgetting about them. That's what happened with my web design client. I gave them space because I figured they'll just get to me whenever. And then they decided to hire a company that was currently paying attention to them when I wasn't. As I said at the beginning, retention marketing takes a lot less effort than growth or acquisition marketing. So there's no reason for you not to do it. And because of that, for the first time in resourceful designer history, I'm going to assign you some homework. I want you to look through your client portfolio. Identify clients that you haven't communicated with in a while be that four months, six months, a year, two years, and reach out to them. Rekindle that relationship. Find out how they're doing. Just let them know you're thinking about them. And then, please, let me know what you did. How did you reach out to them and how did it go? What sort of response, if any, did you get? Send me an email personally at feedback at resourcefuldesigner.com or better yet, leave a comment for this episode at resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 199. And that way, everybody can see it. So that's it for this week. I want to thank you. If you're still listening at this point, I want to thank you for sticking through and learning. And hopefully, this will entice you to take some action and use retention marketing to help your business. Because it's so much easier to do this than it is to acquire new clients. Now, I want to remind you about the resource of the week, which was SiteGround. If you're interested in website hosting, you maybe you want to switch or you need to get some new or whatever, resourcefuldesigner.com slash SiteGround. That is my affiliate link if you want to purchase through it. And there's also the Resourceful Designer community, which is a great bunch of people really, really helping each other out. And I know you would benefit from it as well. So if you're interested in checking out the community, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community. And finally, next week is episode 200 of the podcast, and I'm going to have something special for you then. So I do hope you tune in. If you're not already, please subscribe to the podcast. That way you never miss an episode. And if you know other fellow designers that may benefit from listening, please pass it on to them. So thank you once again. I am Mark DeCote, wishing you all the best with your graphic design business and hoping you're practicing retention marketing. And as I've done every episode for the past 198, so now 199, including this one, I want to remind you to stay creative. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.